superimpose our experiences from other religions onto Islam. So I'm saying, look, let's look at Islam from a non-biased, objective lens and see what's it coming with. Yeah. So you made two points. Mm. The first one was about man um, not being able to, to preserve the scripture. Yeah. And then I said, okay, how do you know? How, how do you evidence that, right? Um, so it's your opinion through your lived experience. Mm. Yeah? Long story short, I'm saying um, that God Almighty is able to preserve his book. And if God Almighty chooses to preserve his book through prophets and messengers, God is able to do that. Yeah? That's belief. That's my faith. Now evidence. Yeah? The Quran was revealed 1400 years ago mm. to a um, Arab, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was an illiterate man. Yeah? Now, he um, verbalized the Quran because it was from God, Gabriel, to the Prophet Muhammad. People ran him, heard it, some wrote it down, all of them memorized it through oral tradition. So the Prophet Muhammad spoke it, people ran him, memorized it. Yeah? So we've got the entire Quran memorized from cover to cover, word for word, dot for dot, letter for letter, in Arabic, and we've got over 200 million people who've memorized the Quran. Yeah. Now, we have a Quran carbon dated into the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, um, in a university in Birmingham. So, do you feel like I've addressed the two points you come with? No, I, no. I still, I'm still, um, I'm still in the camp of. Again, I have no real. Come, come, come I, with a new point because those points have been addressed. Yeah, first. yeah. No, Go no, on. No, um, the way I see, it, I have no problem with faith or mm. exercising your faith or developing your faith. I think it's a powerful driving force mm. that allows people to realize a better, a better part of themselves than they were initially capable of. My problem with religion per se is, for the most part, is it hasn't really been, a, your point hasn't really, okay, you know what, I have to, I have to say this. All right, so I understand what you're saying that I'm addressing, I'm, I'm addressing your point. Yeah. Now, if what I've said is true, mm. then your objections have been resolved. Now, you can independently go and research it mm. to verify it. I'm not going to stand here and lie, especially get it on camera mm. and then get no, proved no. wrong. Yeah, Just Google it. You can even Google it now. Even BBC done an article. Um, news. Yeah. But that, the, I don't think that addresses the problem because although it's been preserved, and yep. I don't doubt, for instance, my the take, that was the point that I made, although it's based on my perspective and my experience of Christianity, it's... Christianity is also my preserved book. Although it has been altered in various ways, you can still find the original. Nonetheless, that does not stop that does not stop individuals from making use of of that gathering force, power of religion. That claim you've made. Straight. That claim you've made. Mm. The Bible. Yeah. Who's preserved it? Who's preserved so the original it? Aramaic? So you wish to say that there's not the same... The, the, so the, King James, the King James Version is the new international version. Um, you know what I mean? The English translation is the Greek original one. You so made you wish a to say it hasn't been memorized. It no, hasn't no, no, been no. preserved in memory. I'm saying it hasn't been preserved full stop. Right now, what's the oldest Bible you have? The King James Version of yeah. the Bible. When was it written? So that's my point. You don't, you, don't, you don't have the original text. You definitely don't have it in Aramaic. Yeah? No. The Bible... The, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, it, it really doesn't. Does it make sense? Go, go, and, go, go and verify that. Jesus Christ, peace upon him, he spoke Aramaic. Yeah? Disciples spoke Hebrew. Yeah? And then now you've got the Bible um, in Greek or Latin. I'm mistaken. Which one is it? Latin. Latin. Yeah? So you've got in Latin. So you've got, at best, a translation of a translation of a translation. And then we speak English. So there's a translation of a translation of a translation of a translation. Does that make sense? So you don't even have the original text. Does that make sense? But does having the original text stop others from abusing their power? Because when you stand at the head of a collective of people, especially one that carries, you know, that centers their faith in the Muslim sense, 
the temptation to be corrupted by that power is existent nonetheless, right? So I, again, I do not know the full history of this. So, so just backtrack, what is the point you're trying to make? So the point is just, I just don't think that, you, I just don't think that, especially in modern you're times. Saying, you're saying the corruption took place with the man or like it's just, uh, early, too early on the point? Like what, I'm trying early, to understand where you're coming it's from. It's just when I see religion as something of a kitchen knife, right? Okay. It can be used in the kitchen to create a delicious meal. Or it can be used to, use to establish a food line, right? Yeah. As is everything else in life. Yeah. I do not fault religion itself, but the fact is that people are the ones that tend to handle the knife. Okay. And oftentimes... So we're moving away from preservation. You're talking about exactly, it can be I'm, abused. Exactly. Yeah. And it's very, it's very much susceptible to abuse, especially what I'm seeing today. So I, okay. I believe in others, in people trying to educate themselves, taking their own spiritual journeys, trying to collate their experiences and try to match that to the book. But you, you see how your logic has backfired on you. How so? Because you're saying the weakness is man-made elements, like mm. us corrupting, us changing it, us mm. misusing it. Yes. But then if you're interpret, like if you're using your spirituality, yes. then there's a chance of you kind of following your own desires and kind of going away from what the truth is and making up your own truth. Yes. And I'm saying that's subjective. Let's go to the objective reality from God, from scripture, mm. that um, now... So that how spiritual journey can't incorporate... It must, of course, that spiritual journey must incorporate the original text. So when I say a spiritual journey, I don't mean that ma that suddenly you have to go out and do your, your, your spiritual own journey right now. What yardstick are you using? How are you going to know that if you're going the right way? What's your compass? You're on a spiritual journey, and what are you using the stars? How are you getting to your destination? And I'm saying, go on a spiritual journey, but your guiding star, your guiding is the perfect preserved scripture which is the Quran now if it's not because the Quran refers to itself as the rope of God mm. yeah rope of Allah so hold on to the Quran and then who's holding on to the rope is leads you to Allah yeah, I mean, do, do you see the logic behind it so the point I'm trying to make is using your analogy the journey the Quran is the guiding star, it's the compass, it's the one that's going to lead you to your destination because otherwise you're going to be going around in circles. You may not even have the intelligence to know you're going around in circles. No. You understand? You see, I've you might been, even be going backwards. So, one thing, one thing, there are questions as to whether, sorry, I'm going to call it, I'm to Go for it. But, um, do you believe that a person intuitively can know what's right and wrong? So, for instance, that one shall not steal, or one should not steal. Although it happens, one should not steal, one should not murder. Yeah. Right? The basic tenet. Do you believe that there is some kind of intrinsic ability to understand those things? Yes. Then that's your spiritual journey. Okay. Now, that is backed up, like, you believe that, I mm. believe that. Mm. Where did you get your belief from? That's rhetorical. I've got the fact that this exists, it's called the fitza from the Qur'an, mm. from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who said, every child is born upon a natural inclination to good, uh, to belief in God. It's innate. Then the society corrupts you. The society gets you to worship idols mm. and says there's multiple gods. But in naturally, innately, everyone believes in one God. Everyone believes that let's be good, show love to your siblings and so on and so forth. But then there's other corruption, the society will corrupt you. And I'm saying, how do we protect ourselves okay, so from that if we don't have divine revelation see, or reference problem, there? My problem with that is that, so those that, those that do not study the Quran, mm -hmm. are they incapable of understanding the better moral self? Are they incapable of spiritual enlightenment, of finding a better path, of finding the path to God? If they have the, not been exposed to the Quran? Yes. Then no, their own able. spiritual... They're then, unable to, yeah. Unable. They're unable to? Yeah. So I thought you said, do you believe they're unable to, yes. Okay, that's where... Because right. you, can't, you can't get to the truth if you don't know what it looks like, if you don't have a road map. I'm saying that the Qur'an um, is an instructional manual for the creation. I hear you. Well, can I just jump in? Because, yeah. like, we're starting from the starting point of 
I'm saying that look, there's elements of truth. Yeah. Even when you go into the core teachings of Hinduism, they actually believe in one God. When you go into the core teachings of Jesus Christ in the Bible, he believed he taught oneness of God. Moses, the Ten Commandments, the first commandment is there's only loose times really there's only one God. Thou shalt not worship none but that one God, yeah. So there's elements of truth, but then man-made elements corrupt it. Yeah. So I'm saying because the Quran is the final revelation from God and God has said that it's from God, God has said God's going to protect it, then this is the guidance which isn't going to lead us astray. Does it make sense? Because otherwise man-made elements will go to it. And like you said, I don't 100% disagree with what you said. Does it make sense? Because why not? I might, I might like superimpose what I want to do, like follow my desires. But then the Quran will come from... Yeah, the Quran comes and it kind of says, no, don't do this, do do this. Does that make sense? So then it kind of puts me in check. See, I'm, I'm not too sure on, on I follow on that one because I have seen, especially, you'll find it in like aged scholars, for instance, right? Mm. Individuals that have never in their life studied or even believed in a God, mm. right? But through their own experiences, because they say life is a journey, mm. through their own experiences, they have come to certain epiphanies and realizations, right? Mm. That there's something greater, there's something more, and that in the, that in its own self is a journey that then draws them into God when they didn't believe it themselves, right? So, seeing stuff like that happen, just makes, I, I don't believe that people are unable to find or connect to God or find some kind of spiritual freedom without first being you know, shown that this is the entire road, not this is the entire way. There, there are just too many, there are just too many roads to the finish line, from my perspective. But, and especially so for me. So I've never read the Quran, but I've read the Bible. But there's still, base, there's still many more basic tenets that you can learn from that. For instance, I find myself, I was studying for, I was, I, I'm trying to get back into scholarship, right? And I was studying what so my can I interrupt you and then I'm going to remind you to finish this point about cells, yeah? yeah. Is that okay? Now, <clears throat> without any religious scripture, mm. yeah, a man in the desert or a shepherd, mm. yeah, he can see... Because there's, there's a million and one stories in the Bible that I'll describe yeah. But you don't even believe in the Bible though. No, you're not, not, you're no, not, you're no, not, you're I not using believe, that. You're, you're I don't believe in religion for the reason that I do not trust it to be delivered by a man. Especially the ones that tend to lead these faiths, the ones that then tend to the ones that tend to stand at the top of the pyramid are automatically of a certain class of people, right? Because a certain class of people would want to be at the top of that pyramid, right? I don't want to call them Macedonian or anything like that. But they're the type of individual that would want that kind of attention, not all of them. But it's it's a natural hot seat, a natural bait for those that want power, right? That's that's my problem with it, and I see it daily. And even, even with the identity politics that are going on these days, right? You're seeing pastors change the word at, on their own to okay. satisfy d modern ideas. Just right? to quickly rebut all that, right? Go and then I'll get back to my point. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? Mm. Lived a humble life, yeah? He was running a state, but he was still humble. Mm. Um, the people were offering him women, money, status to leave his call to um, the worship of one God, yeah. Um, he was still able to run a state, but still, like, he wasn't living a lavish lifestyle. He was living like those hadiths where, um, even after he was at the pinnacle, right, um, the humility, the humble lifestyle he was living, his wives, peace be upon them, were very like, look, now that we've got success, like, give us more provisions. And he said, no. 
He goes, look, if you want worldly life, then I'll divorce you. You can leave. Yeah. I'm, I'm not doing it justice. I'm coming across a bit harsh, but loosely translated. Yeah. It's like, look, but if you want, um, like in the sense that I'll divorce you, I'll set you free. You can, you can live a certain lifestyle. But if you want to live a lifestyle with myself, then it's through this submission lifestyle of a kind of humble, submissive life. And they all agreed to stay with him. Yeah. Where it could have been like, yeah, 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 come, let's, let me get you the Bagatti and X, Y, and Z, and rah, 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 yeah? Or in those days, there would have been the red camels, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the female yeah, camels yeah, and that, yeah? yeah. yeah. Um, so that's one point. So it kind of disregards this kind of thing where what you are saying, mm -hmm. where people who have this intelligence or who have got this enlightenment, sometimes they may go towards kind of living a lifestyle or a lavish lifestyle and they're going to be at the top of the pyramid and they become the top 1% and the rich get richer. Where even when you look at the five pillars in Islam, right, um, very quickly, pillar number three is a tax for the rich to give to the poor. He could have been like, yeah, I'm the prophet, give me all your money. You know what I mean? Um, it's the fastest growing religion. It was so popular at the time as well. But still, um, it wasn't, there wasn't any kind of rulings that directly benefited him. It benefited mankind because it's from God. There was even rulings that humbled him, that corrected him. Does that make sense? And I'll give you, I don't want to go too much on this point, but very quickly, two points. His son died. There's a total eclipse. Um, the believers were like, look, even the sun and the moon are mourning for the death of the Prophet Muhammad's child. Yeah? He replies, the sun and the moon don't mourn my death, you know what I mean? And then he related it back to God. He could have taken that as clout. But look, my, and people, the disbelievers at the time, were mocking him. That look, your bloodline has finished. Who's going to carry your name? His male child died. So he didn't take that clout. You know what I mean? There were other times where he got corrected. Um, and that's it. So it's like there's a human element that's divinely inspired. Yeah? Now, going back to getting to God. Look. It's innate, we believe in like the oneness of God. Yeah. When you say it's innate, given that there are many that don't believe in the oneness of God. That's strange. Does that make sense? That, that's a deviance. And then I'll make the argument there's no atheist on a sinking ship. Um, I mean, we can't know that. <laughs> but then what about the individuals that want to see the world burn because they believe there's no more? So, um, so no, 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 no. I'm saying it's innate, it's natural for us to believe, but then the society can corrupt you. So when you're an atheist, there's a corruption there. Does that make sense? And now See, when you... Go on. Okay, sorry. No, okay. There's, 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 very quickly, I'm going to finish this point and then we're going to go about your Bible story and when you're studying, yeah? So a shepherd in the desert, in wherever, right? He sees the creation of Allah. He sees the sun. He sees how the insects and the plants are growing and stuff like that. That's innately, that's what will connect you to a creator. Because when you see the creation... Yeah. Now what do I do? Yeah, I bring, I, because I, so for you to, in totality, get to God, for you to totally get to paradise, you need the divine revelation. Yeah. Or otherwise, you're going to get misguided. But now, the, the, just on this point, because I've made it now, um, Islam says that look, there's criteria you need to enter paradise. Yeah. And people are going to get questioned depending on the level of knowledge. Now, I've come to you and you're a wise man. Yeah? You've done a lot of reading, yeah? I wouldn't say so, but no. yeah? You've read books, bro. Okay? <laughs> You've read books, yeah? So, now, this information has come to you, but you've chosen not to read the Quran. You've read the Bible, yeah? And I'm well, like... I'm here to read the Quran. Yeah? So then, you're going to get questioned, why didn't you? The man in the desert who's illiterate, who's never read or write, and he's not surrounded by the society as we know it, he's just going to be asked, do you believe in a God? So different people's criteria for entering paradise is different. So yeah? Now, living in the West very quickly, we have to meet the criteria because we're in the West, because we've got access to information and knowledge. Sorry, what you're saying? No, now that you mentioned that, it's been a wish of mine to read every religious book. Just books that hold such power, there's no issue in it, so I have to read them. Okay. Um, um, but... I, life itself is a miracle, and within life itself are many lessons that those that pay attention will learn, right? And that's why I specifically mentioned scholars, those that 
are well read are those that want to seek knowledge and naturally tend they pay attention to those lessons that life teaches them and those that pay the reason so i the reason i disagree with your point there all the although you should definitely seek guidance um is because life itself is your greatest teacher right those that pay attention to to, to, to what you find in life will naturally come to understand. So for instance, what you mentioned before, right? I once had a time or I went once went through a period where I thought I would never bring a child into such a world as this. Yeah. Because it's one that I know the feeling and all that one all that jazz. And yeah. the thing that changed my mind wasn't any kind of sophisticated argument. It was just one time where I was in a park at a lake looking at the sky, seeing the blue sky yeah. and understanding that I have no right to deny life this, this opportunity. Right? So not and those that again are seeking knowledge tend to find these things nonetheless. I, was, I haven't read the Bible in years, and I found myself reading it just two days ago, or at least reading certain verses of it two days ago. Unintentionally, I was reading a book about sales, and there was an old proverb at the end. I think it was something along the lines of, truly no prophet is respected in his hometown. So I thought, that's a pretty good proverb. Where did it come from? I typed it in just to realize like, a verse from the Bible. Four twenty-four, right? And if I can remember it, but I can't remember it verbatim. But ultimately, it was a story whereby Jesus said, or yeah, he quoted what the villagers would say, which is, "Physician, heal yourself. Do in the in our hometown as you did, or as we have heard you do in the capital of the of the north." I need to read that. And ultimately, the follow-up was truly no prophet that is, is respected in his hometown, right? So individuals that pay attention to life and try to enlighten themselves and, and also don't fall to conceit and arrogance and understand that ultimately we know nothing, they will naturally learn many of the lessons that our spiritual leaders might guide us to. Spiritual leaders that might not always be reliable, right? So as much as I believe in the guidance of elders, after all, we all stand on the shoulders of of, of giants and that's how we progress but similarly i do genuinely believe that those that pay attention to life on this that believe or respect the miracle of life will be guided they will just be where does that, that belief come from where's that belief come from you you're, you're, from, you're saying about being humble and stuff so where does that come from the belief comes why from, be humble the reason i say the reason i say the reason i say humble is because conceit is almost a natural sin of man right so this we, knowledge you're departing, yeah, is from where? It's either from yourself or books you've read. Mm. And I'm saying you're influenced by this knowledge yeah. that most likely by the core of it came from a man. And I'm saying, why don't you follow the man who's sent by God, chosen by God? But here I found the knowledge nonetheless. Well, I have found here without needing, an, without an elder's guidance, I have unknowingly found myself back in the hands of the scripture is that not in itself some kind of is that not in itself a movement back towards the hands of god but are you affirming that though are you saying no, that look no, i I'm, need the scripture because again i'm here i'm not i'm not saying stop no, reading the bible no. that makes sense because I'm, I'm i'm trying to have a conversation oh, yeah. with you based on where you're at so if you want to talk from the bible let's talk from the bible i want to talk from the quran let's talk from the quran i'm just look yeah. My but you're saying my, my belief is just based on my own personal experience and what I've seen today and just the transformation I've managed to see all this through. That's all. That's all. Ah, I've let, 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 let's pull it back, right? Yeah. Is there a God? Is there a God? Do you know my answer to that? No, I don't. <laughs> my answer to that is I believe so, but I don't know. I don't know anything. So the best I can do is try to be the best I can. That's, that's literally all that. That sounds very nice and philosophical. It, it's do you believe in God? Do I believe in God? It's either yes or no. Yes. 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 Okay, brilliant. In fact, I, I sound pushy. It can be whatever you want it to no, be. No, no, but no. But no, the logical answer would be either no, yes or just, no. I don't, honestly... I, <laughs> I don't want to force your hand. No, it's just, I'm, I'm tired of, I'm just tired of people these days always thinking that they have answers when... I just want to be honest and say I don't I don't know. I believe there is, but I don't know. Right? Okay. That's that's all there is, that's all I have. No, no, no that, that, that's fine. So how do we reach that knowing? How do, how do we reach that level of conviction and we'll get there? But let's let's build from oh, mate. there is a God. 
<laughs> there is a god. I've, I've already ignored a couple of phone calls, but you're a popular guy. Yeah. Uh -huh. No, no, no. I got a few calls myself that I ignored. No, no. Yeah. So no, no. All right. Yeah. I'll be quick. So there is a god. Yeah. You can't say with 100% certainty, mm. but you want to believe most likely. Most likely? Yeah. Most likely, there's a god. Yeah. Okay. Now, would God create you and me purposelessly? Everyone has their purpose. That's the little voice whispering in the back of your head that's telling you you can be better each day. Yeah, so there is... Sorry, let's go into the shade. Shade? Shelter. Yeah. Uh, what back coat should we have? <laughs> the bus. Let's have that nice, nice background there. Yeah. All right. You're in there, you're in there. Alright, uh, let's do this. Wait, sorry, sorry. If I'm to do this, I need to sleep. No, no, you do. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Alright, so there is a creator. Mm. Yeah. Um, create, create us with a purpose. Yeah. Would that creator articulate that purpose to us? Would that creator communicate that purpose to us? Bro, just tell those brothers to come and check the camera, yeah? No, no, would, would, would God communicate to us? I don't know what God would do. All I know is that each person is born knowing how to be their best selves. Yeah. That's, that's all I know. So I can only assume or I can only believe or have faith that that is a purpose that's been instilled within me. That's no, 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 no. We're, we're going step by step. Go so on, go on, go on. God mm. has created us for a purpose. Do you believe that purpose is programmed into us? Okay. And I'm saying that that purpose was revealed to us by men amongst men chosen by God to convey the message, men trusted by their community. After they die, the message lives them through a book. Yeah. Now, what you're saying, mm. yeah, you don't, it's your opinion. Yeah, it yeah? is. Yeah. What I'm saying, it's a consistent message that's come from Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and the Prophet Muhammad, D David, Noah, Lou, all of these prophets of God have said the same thing. Yeah? So I'm inclined. Can I, can I pause you? Of course. Um, what you're saying is, again, again, I don't have all the, the facts of the case, but what you're saying. Even, even By the way, I'm leaving, like, I'm leaving religion, like, I'm leaving no, religion no, no, to no, one but, side, but I'm saying the premise. No, but I want to say, what you're, that, the, the statement that you made there, is one of the one of my one thing that makes me cautious in terms of how man delivers the message sometimes, right? Because truthfully, yes, there's a history and there's a book and there's a truth, but also it just takes one man to say, "I have the truth to lead others astray." We're gonna verify it later, okay. but just the general principle mm. that they came with that message, you agree? Now, has the message been corrupted? Did one of them lie? Did, did one of them get misquoted? That's separate. Yeah? But this is general principle. Okay. Do you agree with it? Do you I think guess. about it? Think about it. Because I'm saying that, look, um, generally speaking... Okay, so I, I, do, I do have to... Put, sorry, just bear with me one second. Yeah, you take I, the call. I, I have to take the call. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. a, we, we got into a convo. How, what, what do you believe? Um, you know, I'm uh, it's going to be another like, hour, man. But basically... Another hour, we're just gonna be chatting for a few no, minutes. No, 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 because we're on our way somewhere, but um, no, I mean, I'm after destroying the, the course, oh, the course yeah, 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 exactly, man. Um, yeah, nah, I mean, you might as well just destroy him because it's gonna be a whole it's gonna be a fresh combo, yeah. Right. Everyone, yeah. We're gonna start yeah, afresh, yeah, yeah. So, but go on, yeah. How, how much time we got because I want to be respectful of your time. Minutes. Five minutes, yeah. all right, cool. In five minutes, I'm gonna set an alarm from my, my phone. I'll literally give you five minutes. Well, you're giving me five minutes, I appreciate that, yeah. Um, okay. Check me out, bro. Man's, <laughs> man's missing cool as well, you know. Yeah. No, because the thing is, this is about salvation, so it's important. You know what I mean? So, at the end of the day, if it's an emergency, these people will get back to me somehow. Mm -hmm. I'll know about it when they ring me five times in a row. <laughs> but, yeah, five minutes. Alright. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Let me just quickly address the key point, which is, look, if right now, consistently, God has chosen this form to communicate to us through prophets. Now, 
if God is powerful enough to create the universe, God truly exists, which we both affirm God does. Yeah? Again, I can, again, I can own, I, look. I, okay, okay. I don't, look, 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 one thing I don't like doing, one thing I don't like doing is I don't like saying I have answers I don't have. Yeah. No, no, it's very nice being humble and philosophical, yeah? But the fact of the matter is, yeah. if you don't believe there's a God, yeah. I can prove to you God exists. Okay. Yeah? So let's start with that. Yeah? Where did the universe come from? Do not. Yeah? Did the universe begin to exist? Do you know? Yeah? It exists now, so it must have started. Yeah, it must yeah. have started. It must have started. No, no, because technically you could make an argument that it was always there. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Or it must have started. Yeah? I'm saying at the moment, um, leading, leading scientists um, affirm that the universe began to exist, began to exist. Yeah. Um, so that alone shows that the, the universe was created. So you said Big Bang. Yeah? yeah. Again, that's the most popular opinion at the moment that um, the universe came into existence through a Big Bang. Yeah. So I'm like, what caused the Big Bang? I, I, again, I have no clue. And that's fine. Yeah. And that's that's honest. And that's where science stops. Yeah. Yeah. Science doesn't have an opinion on that. Yeah. yeah? And I'm saying that nothing comes from nothing. Yeah. But yeah. do you see... Everything, everything that exists, and I'm following your logic, everything that exists began to exist. And I'm saying God Almighty is the creator, created everything, and Allah, by definition, is uncreated. And this is given in the Qur'an, where Quran, um, chapter 112, verse 3, yeah, um, where... Allah doesn't have offsprings, nor was he born, yeah, nor was he created. So I'm saying to you, if the universe came into existence, Big Bang, and you're like, you're not quite sure about the Big Bang, but that, that's my point. If you're going to rely on not knowing, I'm saying you need to have a base of knowledge, yeah, and then build on that base of knowledge. So if you come back to me in a week's time, month's time, in a year's time or whatever, I wouldn't say yes, I'm in a week's time, in a month's time, in three weeks' time. Like, do something quick, because right now, we're all going to die. That's certain. Yeah. Yeah? We may not, we disagree in who the creator is, but this, we're all going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Now, we may disagree on what's going to happen when we die. Then I'm saying one person is saying, ah, nothing, it's going to be dust. Yeah? And there's someone else saying, no, there's a creator, and if you're good, you're going to go paradise, if you're bad, you can go hellfire. So I'm like, I'm going to verify if there's hell or not. I'm going to make sure I don't go hellfire. So it's a big question. And it's all nice and yeah, I don't know, man. I'm, 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 I'm smart enough to know I don't know. I'm not arrogant to say I know. That's fine. But are you proactive enough? You care about your health. You train before doing this. Yeah. Mentally, <laughs> mentally prepared for training, yeah. <laughs> I rate that, I rate that. <laughs> Anyways, so with everything, even the books you read, there's preparation, there's studying, there's something that goes into it. And I'm saying the hereafter is more important. Why are we not investing in that? So just to recap very quickly, um, yeah, I've got one more minute left. Um, God Almighty, if this universe, um, there's too much design for the net to be a designer, then I'm saying that design is all-powerful, all-knowing, created us for a reason, it's singular, created us for a reason, told us what that reason is through a perfect scripture that hasn't been changed, hasn't been altered, and for salvation and for guidance and for happiness, long-term happiness, we need to follow the scripture. So my only problem with that whole thing is the same way, the same way um, no one, the same way you can refute the Big Bang Theory, because no, what happened before that? Because I actually tried it. Um, By the way, sorry, I'm not refuting the Big Bang Theory. No, 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 it's not about, it's not, yeah. okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. 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 I, I'm just saying that science hasn't got an opinion of, of what caused it. And I'm saying, look, nothing comes from nothing. So it's more logical, more rational, it's your timer, yeah? It's more logical, it's more rational to believe in a creator than not to believe in a creator. Because we were talking about scripture, was it preserved, not preserved? I'm saying... If God is all-knowing, all-powerful, put the universe into being, 
and chose to communicate through this way, God is able to preserve the message. Now, if you don't believe in the Creator, let me make you or facilitate for you to believe in the Creator. And I'm saying nothing comes from nothing. So um, the universe was created by Allah. And the perfect scripture that's got no contradictions in it, 100%, sorry, 80% of the Quran has been proven 100% correct. 10, 20% of it is ambiguous, talking about angels. I can't, I can't prove to you angels exist. Yeah? I can do a logical inference that they exist due to the fact that 80% of the Quran that can be proved correct is proved correct. So logic dictates that other 20% must be correct. Talking about heaven and hell, talking about judgment day. I didn't remember what you said before. I think you said it's not so either to believe in a life hereafter or... It's or innate. Or. It's called fitra. You can Google it. Fitra, to believe in oneness of God, to want to worship God, and innately just being good. Okay, so what of those, what of those that have known nothing but suffering in their life? Is it so natural for them to believe in something hereafter? Yeah. In a creator? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because there are many that damn the world just because of the suffering. But then, is that what? natural for them? Or? No, no. They damn the world not due to the suffering. Because the fact of the matter is, I've gone through trials and tribulations. No. Yeah. And I was speaking to someone about it. They're going to be anonymous, right? And their trials and tribulations get them away from God. No. My trials and tribulations get me towards God. Yeah. Why, why is that? Um, well, I guess some people are. Like, it, 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 It's, per it's, it's perspective, does it make sense? Yeah, so I, I see God putting me through a test and I'm thinking, oh, the Quran says it's hiring my ranks. The Quran says it's an expiation for my sins. The Quran says God is all-knowing, all-powerful and God is all-wise. So there's a wisdom behind it. I have the pixel, God has the picture. I've gone through life where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the worst thing that could happen to me. Then five years down the line, I'm grateful that happened to me. World, can you imagine? Five years down, I'm like, if that didn't happen to me, I wouldn't have done this. I wouldn't have gone there. Now, I wouldn't be where I am. I'm grateful for that terrible thing, which I, I would be like, at a certain point, I'm like, oh God, why me? And this was when I was religious. God, why me, man? Let me pray. I'm being good, and you're gonna do this. You're gonna test me. Why? Yeah. And then I'm like, later, I'm like, Alhamdulillah, I'm grateful to Allah. Does that make sense? And this is one of those things where it's like questioning God is a level of disbelief. Be grateful that, look, this is what God has put you through for a reason. Now, for you to get that level of belief requires knowledge. And I'm telling you, Quran is proactive in saying, be knowledge, gain knowledge, reflect, think of the, think, ponder upon the Quran. If it was like some dodgy book that didn't make sense, had flaws, contradictions, reject it, leave it. Yeah? But you haven't even made time to read it. And yes, you want to read all the scriptures, do it. Read the Quran. Start with the Quran. You've read the Bible, now it's the Quran. Honestly, I need to, I need to give the Bible a real proper read as an adult. Then do this. Read the Bible and yeah. then read the Quran. I'm going to give you this Quran anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a Quran so at home? Oh, yeah. I actually need one. For real. Yeah. I'm going to give yourself a Quran as well. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah. Do you live local? No, I'm from the west and south. So. What brings you down here, man? You don't need to come back another Saturday when you have more time and we'll discuss this further, because how do you feel about what I'm saying to you? I still disagree with a, a, a number of things. But <laughs> like what? No, no, honestly, I, I still, I still, you have, still haven't taken me away from my belief, because I don't doubt, as, as you said, especially when times are hard, there's nothing that can help, there's nothing that can help a man realize his strength more than faith, right? So, I read this one account of, um, uh, I mean, this, this story that got caught by some cannibals. <laughs> no, no, because belief in God it lowers levels of suicide and depression. People who believe in God, regardless of the religion, they're happier people. Yeah. But what is your main contention? And let's see if I can address it, and then I'm going to let you go. And even if I can't can address it, I'll let you go anyways. I'm going to tie you, tie you to one of these. Like, you must. You're going to stay until you believe. Ultimately, I just, I just believe that there's, it's definitely the better route to be guided by. By scripture, or by elders, but I, I just believe that life is such a miraculous thing that those that pay attention to it will learn and be guided.
So what's your main contention of what I've said? You said you disagree with something I've said. Because yeah, you're allowed to believe what you believe. I, I know, but it'll, it'll take more time. More no, no, time but the, give, me, give me one contention. Because I feel like I've addressed all of your ones. Does that make sense? Because it's like, if God, if God exists, yeah, and God has given revelation, and God is communicating through a man, then God is able to preserve the book. And if the Quran is being corrupted, because maybe another point you've made um, is about man's ability to misinterpret or influence their own interpretation into it. And the Quran addresses this. Okay, because so, okay. And Islam, sorry, not the Quran. Okay, so, 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 just very quickly. Okay. Very, very, very quickly. Okay. No, I go just, on. I just want no, to no, go, 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 go. No, 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 no. The contention, for instance, right? So, yeah. you mentioned earlier that those that do not know the Quran cannot know God, right? Truly know right. God or, or enter paradise, yeah. But it is. Those but there's, there's criteria as well, but yeah. Those same sentiments that lead to some of the worst atrocities that we see in our history. For right? example. Okay. So, example. So, for example, we look at the Crusades, right? Yeah. The intention was to go and not only liberate the holy city, but also to spread the word of God, yeah. right? Spreading the word of God, meaning, well, also including slaughtering, pillaging, and the rest, right? Yeah. So, um, so. Look, give me, give me, a, give me, give me an example no, of Islam doing this. I, I don't know Islam. No, 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 that's, that's my point. So you're superimposing your knowledge, and I'm saying, no, it's just what about you know Hitler? What knowledge, about Stalin? It's just my understanding of the what about that? Who, who that should issue the greatest good and the greatest evil? A tool like, a, and I see it as a tool, right? As good as it is, I see it as a tool. When you put a kitchen knife into his hands, sometimes you're going to get a chef, sometimes you get a guest. That's just that's just the way of the world, right? Mm. I don't just the way I see. Um, Christianity that way, I, I, I don't see how the Quran could ever be different because ultimately it has to go through the hands of man. And if I actually took time to study, I'll, of course, I, I'm certain with 100% certainty that I'd find individuals that pushed or that took the lead of individuals that meant well, that wanted to spread their word and turned it into a hundred parts. But that's it. That's, that's, that's what I was up to now, right? Thank you so much. Appreciate right? your time. Right, what's Cheers. your name? Ridwan. Oh, oh. Say, again. Say Rid one. Rid one. Rid one. Yeah. Bevan. 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 David. Yeah. David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Biblical. Right, strong, right. strong <laughs> biblical <laughs> name there. But yeah, next time hopefully to be continued, man, on Saturdays. Let me give you a Quran. Yeah, you got David. One, yeah. Bye, camera. Bye. <laughs>